Hi, I'm Cheryl Cadzo and welcome to Artisans of Central Vic. In this program we'll be talking to very talented people in the Bendigo district. Today I'd like to introduce to you Chloe Neath. Welcome Chloe. Hi. And with all the different sorts of mediums here, what sort of artist are you? Well, I actually studied a uh, Bachelor of Fine Art Painting at RMIT uh, in Melbourne, but um, I've been drawn to doing drawings, really, uh, especially in the last two years. Um, I picked up charcoal and since then have been using that as my main medium. Um, I think I really like the challenge of it. It can be a very messy material, yeah. um, but it creates a really lovely soft glow to the drawings and um, it's also the challenge of getting that really fine detail um, that I really enjoy. So I have dabbled in other areas, I like assemblage, um, I've done some paste ups as well but um, my main focus is using charcoal at the moment. Chloe, um, what got you started in art, what, what motivated you to get going as an artist? Um, I had watched my mum doing drawings when we were growing up and she had a really uh, a natural talent to be able to copy things really accurately. And then all through schooling I think I got feedback that you know something was working quite well. Mm. Um, so I did the uni course uh, and basically got into teaching and that's been my creative outlet has been working with students. Mm. Um, and not really making enough time, I guess, to do my own work. But in the last few years, I've really made that extra effort and set up a studio in my home. And that's where it's really blossoming and, and um, things are advancing really well. I'm really happy to finally be making the time to make the artwork. It takes a bit of work to get in there at the start, but um, now I feel like things are really progressing well, yeah. That's great. And Chloe, what have been the influences in your life to lead you to the art form that you've taken on? Um, in terms of my art developing I think I've been spending a lot of time researching images that inspire me. Mm -hmm. um, the internet can be seen in a negative way but if you use it as a tool um, for inspiration there's just a, such a lot of uh, imagery out there that I find Definitely. really helps me. Um, I love the pre-Raphaelites, I think the women are absolutely stunning and, and I guess the last two years leading up to now I've been doing women's faces, I find that they hold uh, a lot of emotion, I think people connect with them a lot and people from different backgrounds, I, I one area I went into was looking at um, mug shots um, from sort of uh, let's say about the 1930s, 40s. Um, and got, found some amazing shots of these very strong women um, survivors and the intensity in their faces was excellent, so really, really lovely to draw. Um, I like the contrast of dark and light and of course that works beautifully with charcoal. Uh, and yeah, maybe, maybe the beauty as well in terms of my, um, movie star shots, classic movie star shots. Um, but I think there's also been a few drawings I've done of old faces and I think again you can see in their eyes mm -hmm. um, their stories so that seems to work people seem to respond to them really well and it still challenges me with the charcoal to get that realism in there. And what sort of techniques do you use to get to your final products? Uh, well, since working on the faces I've uh, moved on to a slightly new approach with my artwork um, where I'm having to come up with compositions and layouts that have settings mm -hmm. and um, people uh, posed in them and I found Photoshop's been um, invaluable for me to be able to make those compositions. Um, it's once you get the images in and start playing with them you can look at lots of different options to get exactly the layout that you want so really really useful tool um, especially with being able to um, enhance light and put shadows where you want them, mm. add in textures where you want them. Um, mm. So I find if I use Photoshop to get exactly the layout I want, I then have a perfectly constructed composition that I can then draw up incredibly accurately um, and getting you all the detail that I want because I've constructed it myself exactly how I want to see it. Mm. So um, Photoshop has been fantastic. Yeah.
Now, uh, you've had some exhibitions. Can you tell me what exhibitions you've had and where they were? Things started off in a different way from the drawing. I did a, a toy exhibition um, where everybody had to use a money toy and um, transform it in some way. And then I went on to do assemblage uh, mm -hmm. where I gathered a whole load of um, objects from my dad's past and did kind of a portrait um, for him. So that was really lovely. And then I started drawing, but then did paste, a paste up in um, Chancery Lane. They've got a fantastic display of paste up works there from artists all over Bendigo. So that's a great spot to go and see. Uh, and then sort of one of the most important um, things I did was I took part in a collab exhibition at um, Viewpoint Gallery in town. I'd heard about it from the Bend Arts um, Facebook page which is a great group in mm. terms of seeing what's going on around Bendigo. Um, and I asked uh, a theatre group if I could use one of their spoken pieces to go with one of the artworks I was doing. Um, I'd drawn an image of a woman's face cowering and I hadn't decided what it was that she was cowering from. And I heard this fantastic poem called The Spider and the Fly and it was by the Laudanum Project, um, this theatre group. And it was the spider that stuck in my mind. So I put long, black, pointy spider legs into this drawing and I approached um, Nick Ravenswood from the group mm -hmm. and said, you know, would you like to collaborate? Could I put uh, your spoken piece with my drawing into this show? And he was happy to do that. So that was a really important exhibition um, for me in terms of my progress. And then there's also, in Bendigo, you can go and see this Pennyweight Lane mm -hmm. and it's got 12 artists' work. Um, you had to apply for it, but it was basically to be outside. So it's two and a half metres by a metre artworks put into this laneway. And um, I decided to base it around the history of women in Bendigo. And uh, I did some research and initially found lots about men and um, all their input into the growth of Bendigo, which is fantastic. But there was that hidden story of women behind the men because they were just an equal part. Mm -hmm. um, so I started gathering all different kinds of women's names from uh, you know, people that were arrested or performers or artists or singers or people from high society and, um, or people from overseas and included those names around a face. Um, tried to pick a face that was a bit ambiguous so it could have been anyone from any background mm -hmm. um, and blew it up really big and had it uh, in that laneway. So that's up for um, two years, so it'll be up for a long time so people can have a chance to go down and have a look at that and the other artworks that are there. Um, a really nice group setting for artists from Bendigo. Yeah, it sounds really great. Yeah. I heard you talk about the Laudanum Project. What's that? That sounds interesting. Okay. Um, I did the Spider and the Fly exhibition mm -hmm. um, with uh, Nick Ravenswood from the Laudanum Project. And um, uh, I had originally seen them perform a play called Ballad of the Plague Doctor. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess the style of that performance, it's a little bit Victorian era, a little bit um, dark, a little bit of suspense. A little bit Jack the Ripper sort mm -hmm. of feel and um, I love that performance and then after doing the exhibition I went back to see the show again uh, because I loved hearing his language and um, Nick approached me after the show and said I've looked at your artwork on um, Facebook and I'd be really interested in doing something further with you I've written this story and um, I wondered if you'd want to do a graphic novel together and a graphic novel basically is a story um, told through images and it has some words in there as well. And um, so I read, the, I read the story and just loved it and thought I could do this. I could do these images mm -hmm. um, and make this work and would love to work with him because I really loved um, the way that he wrote. So I put together a couple of drawings and um, 
and showed Nick and he was really pleased. Uh, he went and spoke to a publisher who was a friend of um, a friend of his and she was really pleased as well and saw a lot of potential in his writing as well as the images mm -hmm. and, and put the idea of putting the two together she thought could work brilliantly. So um, basically we're going to be putting together about 20 images that go alongside the story. We are going to include perhaps more words than you would traditionally use with a graphic mm -hmm. novel. Um, but we don't, we don't want to lose that language because it, it, it's really poetic, it's really evocative language that's going to work beautifully with the um, images. So I've been working on a, a main pitch image plus the two that I've done and once we've got that organised we'll take it to the publisher and see how we go. But um, we've heard, had already had really good feedback for it. Um, the idea is that we publish the book, have Nick's performance, the Laudanum Project's performance at mm -hmm. the same time, um, and also have an exhibition of the artworks as well. So it's a pretty big launch of the three things all at mm. the same time. Um, yeah, I'm really excited about the challenge of it. And, and the drawings themselves at the moment, are they're, they're, they've got beauty in them, but they've also got suspense and shadows and a slight eeriness to them. Mm -hmm. uh, and people seem to be responding really well once they see the images. So I think it's going to work really well. well that sounds really exciting. Yeah. Um, I can't wait to see it. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what size do you think the book will be published in, in the final format? Well, um, I'm my drawings that I'm working on are sort of quite large. Yes. Um, but the idea is to reduce those down. Uh, I, ideally, A4 would be the best in terms of people being able to... Um, see the images in enough detail mm -hmm. um, and the facing page you know uh, would have his words on as well so you're looking at about a4 size yeah it should be clear enough for people to see so sort of like a storybook but it's very um, grown up mm -hmm. yes. now you just come back from England mm. and you're doing some research for this book tell yeah. us what you did there and how you use it okay well um, uh, basically yeah I was lucky enough to go to England and um, I spent some time in Liverpool when I was with my family um, and managed to find some excellent shots for the book. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's set in London. The whole um, story is set in London. Uh, so I needed co cobbled laneways and I needed dark alleyways mm. and crumbling facades of buildings and um, street lamps. And luckily, because it's getting dark over there so early, I was able to get a whole load of fantastic shots. Mm -hmm. um, the main character is called Alphonse Cheese Probert and he's quite spooky and creepy and in certain scenes he's going to be under a street lamp on the street beckoning up to a girl at the window. Mm -hmm. So um, I managed to get some great shots of street lamps. That's so good. yeah looking forward to um, using that research and, and knowing that it's actually from England is really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah that's good. Mm -hmm. Chloe, what are your plans for the future with your art? Well, um, I guess with the book, uh, that's going to keep me happily occupied for quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, each drawing is probably about 20 hours. Um, oh. So, yeah, and, and that's fine. I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, working on each one because each one has to be an art piece on its mm -hmm. own, I feel like. Um, but... Uh, alongside that, um, researching, doing large images as well. A friend of mine gave me a projector, and uh, which is fantastic. And it uh, gives me the capacity to go a lot bigger. And uh, I just have visions in my head of the fine detail of people's skin and faces. And mm. So um, that's a bit exciting. So I'll, I'll be looking into that as well. And, um, and looking around at different projects around Bendigo, it's a, it's a bit of a hub for creativity here. Definitely. Um, yes. Yeah, so uh, any opportunities that come up, I'll be keeping a close eye on Bend Arts um, to see what they're talking about and trying to take part in different exhibitions mm -hmm. um, as we go along. But yeah, I think the book and um, maybe some large arts, large scale artworks as well. Okay.
have plans uh, in this upcoming year to have a solo show. I've got, at the moment, I've got a house full of these large um, female portraits that need to really be exhibited and uh, for people to see them. Um, I work full time, I am a secondary art teacher, but um, hopefully uh, people watching this can also see that you can fit in art around your um, full-time job. So the plan is to have the uh, solo show this year and um, based on what I've been able to get done so far, uh, it should go ahead. Yes, yeah, so I'm excited about that. That sounds good, yeah. Leave the bottle on the table. Shot, shot. Stop your sweating if you're able. I shouldn't have been unchained to see my mama in pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The prodigal son returns, but the sins of the father remain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, father, why look so grim? Is he must come home now? Yeah. How about you let him in? How about you? Dead man falls to the dirt. Bang, bang. I never felt like such a monster. But I shouldn't have been unchained to wreak this havoc and pain. Hey, yeah. I said, I you better not take my name in vain. Hey, yeah. oh, 